All right, this week um, they want you to create, well, there's three elements here. They want you to create a ribbon chart, a bump chart, and then have that bump chart arranged by rank order. So if we expand this a little bit. So the top here is the ribbon chart. This is the bump chart. And then this is the third element that they want you to kind of figure out. So, all right, let's see if we can recreate that. So this is a blank um, Power BI instance. We're gonna get a sample data set. Uh, load sample data. We're going to grab finance. Actually, do they do finance? Now that I think that, I don't know. <clears throat> Use financial sample data set. They did. Okay. Thought I was going nuts for a while. Okay. So, um, let's just recreate this. So first is we need some text. Uh, Hold on, I want to put this to another screen so I could reference it a little easier. All right, so we're gonna just choose a random color scheme. That's fine. <coughs> Call it workout Wednesday. Have the pipe, Power BI. You turn a ribbon chart into a bump chart. Do 24. Let's make this bigger. It's probably a little too small. Let's do. Let's make it bigger. 20, 32's probably too big. 28. All right, 24 it is. Whatever. This one is bolded. This one is not as thick. So let's go. Let's go a light. All right. Then they have the hashtags. Workout Wednesday, 2021. Had a little stroke there. Power BI challenge by David Elders Veld. Data Veld. All right, and we'll make this a little smaller. Probably 14. No, it's a little too small. 16. Let's go away. All right, that is the title, and I think that's a good start. Turn off the background. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at look at that again. So first thing first, uh, let's make a ribbon chart. Where what are the elements we're going to need? Date, country, and of course the value, which is uh, sales, I believe, sales by date and country. So let's go make that. Sorry for the pause. Every time I move to the other screen, I have to uh, recreate it. Hold on, actually, let's what the date values are. Data is like that. Uh, we probably want to create a new column for this one, um, just just for aesthetic purposes. So we're going to call this month year, and we're going to format the date to oops, wrong date, financial date, and then we're going to format it as uh, month 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 year year year. Okay. Looks good. It's a text value. Um, that's fine, actually. Okay, so we'll do. Oh no, no, one other thing. So because this is a text value, it, it technically has no value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna arrange this by the date. Date. So now it has actual date value to it. So when you sort it, it has meaning. So <clears throat> month, year, sales. Okay, so we got that, and then we want it by country. Um, as a matter of practice, so sales right now is, a, is an implicit measure. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make that an explicit measure. And so I'm not going to spend time explaining the difference, but it is good practice to do it. So we'll call this total sales, sum sales. All right. Um, I, I mean, I could talk very briefly about it, but uh, the idea is like implicit measures, kind of this auto thing that Power BI does. It's not really convenient. It's kind of limited in what you can do. Um, and especially if you're going to use it a lot, it's just better to do an explicit um, measure on an implicit field or uh, yeah, on, on a value field. So I'll just keep it at that. I, I, I won't go further into it. So um, let me just kind of zoom in. So it's a little clear. Uh, we probably don't need total values. Probably 16. 
Yeah, nice and thick. <clears throat> Column headers. I just need a little bigger. Let's do 14, actually. That's probably big enough. Okay, so uh, just to show that there's nothing up my sleeve, same values, total sales is dollar amounts. So now it's got a little character. Let's give it some decimals. Is there? Yeah, there's two decimals. Okay, so it should be one to one almost. So now we can get rid of sales, same value. And so let's make a ribbon chart. So the ribbon chart is a default visual. So it's right here. What happened here? Axis is month. Fine. There you go. And there it is. We're effectively done. Um, let's get rid of the filters. We don't need to see this. Actually, is there anything we need to filter out? I don't know. Countries. Are there any blank countries? No, they're all good. <clears throat> um, now it's just, I guess, kind of about making things pretty. Um, I guess you can rename this to what they have it, which is... <clears throat> Sales by date, and country. Uh, the way they have it is earliest to latest, so we have the same thing just in case. Let's sort by month year. Now it's reversed, so we're gonna ascend. Okay. Um, it's a little fat, it's a little unclear. I mean, I could stretch it out to make it a little more clear, but uh, the easier method is just to change the ribbons themselves. So spacing, what does spacing do again? And that'll do at 10. I could have sworn there was a thickness. Maybe not. Maybe there's no thickness value. We'll just do 15. There it gives it some some uh, distinction. All right. Um, so let's look at our reference. So we're kind of almost there, right? That's what they have there. If I make it large, it's good. Um, <clears throat> Top should be Germany with, let's just say for October 2013, top should be Germany, 2.5 million. So what do we have here? October, Germany, 2.5 million. So we are good. All right, so what is the next thing we've got to reproduce? We've now got to make a bump chart. So a bump chart is effectively what looks like a line, a line chart. So actually, let's look at this. Create a ribbon chart with date, country, sales, done. Create a DAX measure that will rank countries by sales. Okay. All right, so now we just let's let's start from let's start from the basics. Let's not even make that line chart. Let's make a ranking measure. Call this rank. We're going to use rank X. The table is financials. And we are just going to rank it by sum of sales. <clears throat> All right. Off the top bat, that's probably not going to work cuz I got to be explicit about um about the context of the table. So uh, but, but, but what am I going to do? We'll do country. We'll do total sales. We'll do this. Actually, we'll do a matrix. And then we'll do month, year as the columns. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know what? Actually, for the uh, sake of illustrating, I'm not going to do the month, year. Okay. So let's see. Um, so we have the countries and we want to rank it, right? So let's clean this up a little so it's easier to see. Values. <clears throat> 14. Total. Where's the totals? Oh, it's probably because it's a matrix. Total. Take that off. So we want to rank it. So let's make a rank. Oh, no, we did. So we add a rank and it's all one, right? <clears throat> so the reason why it's all one is because... Rank X, um, the two primary values it needs is source of data and what you want to do with the data, which we have provided. But it's super finicky to the context of the table it's in. And also X functions, that is some X, rank X, whatever. It's iterative row, um, row function. So um, effectively, this is correct in a sense. Um, all I'm saying is we got to give it some more detail so that it knows exactly what we want it to do. Because right now, the way it stands is it's looking at each row. And within each row, it's looking sort of at, at that table of data, but because each row only has one, um, effectively each row is the number one in number one value of that table, if you will. I'm doing air quotes, but nobody can nobody can see that. So um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to give it some context. So one way to do that is you can use all selected or you can do all. So in this case, we're gonna do all, all, 
and the context is hey rank it by the sales but um take into account country so we're gonna do all country let's see if that works there you go one two three four <clears throat> there you go so united states should be the biggest out of the entire course of the month um but of course we don't want that we want a bump chart so let's transform this into a line that is not what we want but we just got to fix that up so the axis will not be the, the country. We'll put that as a legend. The axis will actually be the month year. That's weird. Why don't you? All right, I'm confused. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's, no. No, the axis is rank? Hold on. <clears throat> so it's that. So it's definitely month year. And then you definitely want to split it by. Oh, 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 no, it's not. It's it's a uh, rank. Rank is the value. Duh, there you go. So and also it doesn't have to be so this thin, so let's make this a little bigger. Almost had a little brain fart there. Nine hundred. Ooh, that's a little ugly. It's a little hard to see, so we'll kind of make make do with it. So fit to width. Do that. All right, so we have it. Um, September 3rd, so it's all lined. The worst should be Canada. The best should be Germany uh, at first, I guess. Um, there's some cutting off. So what we can do is we can manually set the legend or the Y axis. So I'm going to set this at, um, 5.5 and this will be at zero. All right. And now it's a little cleaner. Um, uh, 0 0.5. Oh, oops. It goes backwards. Zero to 5.5, a little bit too much. So 0 0.5. That's, I think that's good enough. So it should look something like this. So let's go back to <coughs> requirements. So what do they have? They have Germany's one, which is correct. Uh, Mexico's last, is that what we have? Mexico is last. All right, so it's correct. So the only other thing we have to do now is we've got to shift it in a weird way so that the country rank is opposite um so that's gonna have to this that's gonna have to be some kind of custom tomfoolery because by nature of a line chart and the axis it's not going to naturally want to be one two three four it, it's going to go with the normal y-axis way which is smallest to largest uh heading upwards so that's just, let's look at some look at some notes use a dax measure that will rank we did that already um add a line chart yeah we did that that, that includes day country uh, add markers to your chart Determine a way to make your sales rank to the line appears. Uh, yeah, okay. If you modify, okay, I, I got the gist of it. All right, so we got to make it a little bit more pretty. So why don't we do that? Marcus, where are the markers? Is it shapes? Round? Show marker. There it is. Do diamonds. And then uh, bigger. <coughs> 10. There's all the markers. And now we got to switch it. So one way, obviously, to switch it is to give it negative values. And this part, I'm going to be really curious about how they do it. Um, so why don't we give it negative values to flip it? Uh, rank. So whatever rank you give, multiply by negative one. And so what you're going to have is zero because I have manually adjusted the uh, scale. So if I were to go back here, I'd actually want to go backwards. So um, negative 5.5, .5, oops, to, <clears throat> I guess, negative 0 0.5. That should be it. Okay, so we're good, but how do we get rid of the negative sign? Top is mm, Germany, bottom is Mexico. Actually, let's see what they did. Because if they did something similar to what I'm doing, I'll be able to tell by the tooltip. No, they did not. Well, maybe. Let's see. All right. So <clears throat> we're kind of getting there. Um, the problem is. <clears throat> Hold on. Sorry. I'm trying to clear my throat. We'll make this a little bigger. 
What was Y? Was it already 10? Did I basically do nothing? Do 12. Um, what we can do is we could fool around those numbers. So what I mean by that is we can go there. We can go to rank. We're going to go down format. We're going to go to custom. Custom format. So this will reveal the entire thing of how you want to customize it. So basically it tells you two things. Um, here's example of positive values. Here's negative values. And here is a number example. So the custom format right now is putting everything as dollar uh, currency amounts. We don't need that, so we're going to remove that. And then the other one is um, <clears throat> if it's positive, it'll have that, that normal number. If it's negative, we'll put it in brackets. So if we leave as is, I believe our ranking will, instead of having negative, it'll have brackets. So I'm going to delete. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do it just, just a proof of concept. But I bet you my uh, graph is going to have brackets. Yeah, there you go. So we go there, and yeah, we're there. All right, we just delete the brackets so that we don't want that thing there. And there you go, voila. And it's one, two, three, four. So that is how I did it. Um, I don't know if that's how they did it. Um, you're going to have to wait to see if they release a video. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I guess if you want to do some nuances of your OCD, well, let me, hold on, let me see. What what'd they call it? Sales rank by data and country. Let us sales rank by date and country. There you go. That way we're not a little too butthurt about it. <coughs> Y-axis. Let's get a name for that one. Show title. Axis title. Rank. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, you guys can check out. I'm just making it pretty. Nah, I'm not going to make it pretty. Okay. So that, that's it. That should be how you do it. Um, I'm not sure if that's how I actually do it, but it looks like it's pretty close. So yeah, 